This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. What's up, Detroit sports fans? Welcome to the Fan Report, a show made by fans for fans, part of the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. I'm Nick, and coming at us today is Andrew's going to give us this week's topics. We're going to keep things off today by gauging each other's excitement level for the upcoming NFL season. Then we're going to keep it in-house in the NFL and talk about that NFL player's top 100 list, and did any Lions really deserve to make that list? And finally, we're going to uh, close it out with some fun sports video game talk. It's Fan Report. Okay. Well, um, so obviously we didn't have an episode last week. Uh, very busy between the two of us and mm-hmm. all that stuff. But we're back this week. Actually, surprisingly, a lot to talk about. Sports are back. Sports are back. We have sports back. Have you um, been watching the NBA research at all or no? I, no, I've been too busy. <laughs> uh, but sports we are back. We switched to Spectrum, so like I could finally like stream all my channels on my oh, phone now and nice. everything. Yeah. So I've been... I've been watching left and right. Yeah, I will say I've watched a little bit of the golf tournaments when I could have, because those are usually going on during my work day. And if I'm not busy at work, I can just pull it up on my phone. So I've watched a little bit of those. But outside of that, I, I've caught a little bit of baseball, a little bit of Tigers baseball. But the Pistons aren't playing, so I'm not like, and we're not in the playoffs yet, technically speaking. So I'm not like super into the NBA or the uh, yeah. and hockey just started back up within the last couple mm-hmm. of days. So I haven't gotten. I followed along with all of it and paid yeah. attention to it. I just yeah, games have been really good so far for the NBA. That's what I've heard. Most of them. That's what I've heard. <laughs> I've also heard that the Lakers could be in some trouble. The game against the Clippers, they did not look mm-hmm. so hot, and the Clippers mm-hmm. like had Kawhi in foul trouble early. Paul George did not look right. They didn't have Lou Will. They didn't have they like just, a bunch of their core players on that roster for the Clippers, and the and Lakers. They dropped so, one in Toronto last night, right? So the Lakers could be in some trouble here. Yeah. As I start to readjust to the sports life, obviously I'll mm-hmm. I'll get be watching more and more of it and getting into it a little bit better. So, but with that being said, it's it's been a long time coming. We've been waiting for this day for this time. We've been waiting for the return of sports, but it's also kind of come with. The other side of things where we've had some players decide to opt out and then we've had situations like in baseball where a certain team down in Miami named after a fish uh, <laughs> decided that a bunch of their Gee, players, it down. <laughs> a bunch of their players decided that they weren't going to break their quarantine or their quarantine <laughs> protocols and go out. Yep. And now 18 of their players and staff members are infected with COVID. They've had to postpone their season effectively. They've caused other teams to have to postpone their season effectively. But the, there's also, you know, in, in other sports, there's, you know, in the NFL, we've had player after player after player go to either an opt out or be placed on a COVID-19 list, a reserve list. We've seen the same a little bit in basketball. I mean, Lou Williams went to a strip club. He posted pictures from said strip club. I don't know how much more dumb you can get. Yeah. And now and then he hit, was forced to <laughs> not play. He was forced to go into a smaller bubble, mm-hmm. one of his own. But I kind of wanted to get your thoughts. Obviously, uh, just to kind of where I'm going with this is I kind of mm-hmm. want to get gauge your thoughts. And are you in terms of the NFL? Are you excited about the NFL season coming up? And I kind of wanted to, to converge kind of two topics here. Uh, are you excited about the upcoming NFL season, especially from a Lions fan standpoint with the amount of players that have been put on a COVID list? Is this something we're going to see throughout the season and just the other sports? How have these leagues handled the restart of their sports, not just from mm-hmm. the COVID perspective, but from the no fans perspective? How have the broadcast gone? How is, you know, how how has it been from a viewer experience to, to watch these games and see how they've done just from, you know, from an at home experience? All right, well, I'll take the first question first then. And I'll say as far as um, the NFL thing is concerned, they're, so their restart, I mean, we've talked on the show before. We both had our worries about the whole thing getting delayed and is it really the right idea to start the season on time? And as long as the NFL was playing, I was excited because I love watching football. And it was probably going to be a little bit different, but I knew it was going to be football nonetheless. But now, the closer we get to the start of the season, the more worried I'm getting because you're seeing this COVID list popped up, pop up. You're seeing these all these players opt out. Looks like the player, uh, the, the Patriots are almost tanking at this point with the amount of players they have opted out. Not just COVID list, just straight up opted out. But with the like, let's take it with the Lions specifically. On their COVID list right now, they just announced Stafford was placed on it um, yesterday, and you also have Kenny Galladay. You got T.J. Hawkinson, Amani Arouarie, 
Jalen Elliott, Justin Coleman, Isaac Nada, and our punter Aaron or, or backup punter Aaron Sipos. Obviously, these players being on the COVID list now does not mean they won't be available to start the season. Right. This but just what means this wor- where this worries me is if this is how many are on the COVID list now, what's going to happen once we start this? Like, it, it's it's not like the COVID list is going to suddenly become non-existent. I like. I'm looking at this like is this is how many people I should probably expect to be on the COVID list throughout the season, just different names. From a fan standpoint, it's kind of annoying. I mean, yes, you get football, but like it's anything goes football. Like and it, it feels like anyone can win on any given Sunday. You know, anyone can win on every given any given Sunday, but like even more you don't so know now. you don't know who you're going into the game with anymore. Right. It's, it's hard for teams to game plan. It's hard as like a fancy football fan. It's hard for me to <laughs> play fancy football because like I don't know what I'm gonna have next week. <laughs> like, right. Well I so mean from that standpoint, it, it makes me a little bit worried. So I, I think I think my ideal scenario would be just to um Take which which gets me to the second part, of, but you you want to interrupt before I because my scenario takes me to the second part of the question. Right? Yeah, yeah. I I, I kind of wanted to piggyback off what you were saying, and and the yes. Patriots obviously have had a bunch of players straight up opt out, and the Lions only had one. Most teams have only had one or two. I know the Jets also had C.J. Mosley opt out, so that's another bigger name. But in the Lions case, and in, in all these reserve COVID list players, and in, in the Lions case, like Kenny, Kenny Galladay, Matt Stafford, T.J. Hawkinson. It's not that these guys have COVID or they're not going to play. It, it, this is a situation where, and I think what we're seeing now is a little bit more of an inflated list for COVID-19 because the league mm-hmm. year is just now starting. So they're putting a lot of these players that, and what this list is for is players who were potentially exposed to COVID-19 yep. or in mm-hmm. Aaron Sipos's case, he did test positive or, you know, didn't quarantine to what the NFL wanted them to. This doesn't mean that they had COVID. This doesn't mean that someone in their house had COVID. This this doesn't mean that, you know, they were going out and partying like crazy, going to strip clubs, and that, you know, this is in their downtime when sports were shut down, when they weren't doing OTAs, when they were doing their own things at their home in the offseason, that they did not meet the quarantine expectations of the NFL. So they probably went out to eat with their family. They probably, you know, went out and met up with some friends. Like, that. that... That's why these players were put on this COVID reserve list. And I honestly, I kind of expected that a little bit as we just start up the league year, just because nobody was following the NFL's protocols right away because we didn't know what they were. They just announced them. We just had an agreement between the NFL and the NFL, the owners group and the NFL PA on what the protocols and what the process was going to be. So once they laid that framework, we were going to have players who didn't meet that threshold end up on this reserve list, which is, you know, a short term thing. They'll be back. So it doesn't really scare me all that much because now that we know what the groundworks, what the groundwork is, now that we know what the protocols are, what the restrictions are, they can now follow that. They didn't know you can't follow something if you don't know what it is. So that's why you're seeing probably what I expect to be a heightened number of players on this reserve list. So it doesn't worry me as much now that the league year started. Players know what they're supposed to do. Will we still have some players break that? Yes. Look at baseball. Look at basketball. You're going to have players break it. But I don't think it's going to be as many as what we're seeing now. So I'm not Mm -hmm. as worried about that perspective of things. Yeah. But go ahead and... That, that that's where exactly exact where I was going with it because it, it addresses the second part of the question too, and that is once the season starts, like at least I think what should happen is the NFL should follow more closely the NBA suit than to the MLB's example because the MLB has already gone pretty messy with the restart. I don't know how viable it is to have a full on bubble for the NFL. Well, you can't in the NFL. Yeah, it's straight yeah. up. If you're going to play your season, the you know you can't play a full season with a bubble. Um, mm-hmm. you, you just can't. It's you're doing a full season, kind of like baseball is. You're not yeah, doing exactly. a situation like basketball mm-hmm. and hockey, where you've already started your season, almost finished it, and now you got to finish it. Yeah. and you only have a certain amount mm-hmm. of teams left. Yeah, uh, you think I... about it when, when it comes to a football team. How much personnel? I mean, you, you're talking about you probably a normal football team is probably as close to 52 players. Mm-hmm. Plus, you're going to have to have a taxi crew of some sort. like So like a 25-man practice squad that travels with your team, quote unquote, mm-hmm. you know, in the bubble with your team, plus probably 100 staff and personnel. Times that by 32, there's mm-hmm. no way any bubble exists that can house yeah. that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's I don't know feasible. how viable a bubble is, but 
the NFL needs to come in with more with stricter, more clear defined restrictions in an attempt to mitigate what's going on, the risk of what's going on with the MLB right now, where you have like whole swaths of teams that are exposed to COVID. So that's where my worry is. And that that's why I think to answer your second question is why I think to me, although the NBA's restart was much easier to do in the MLBs, I think the NBA has handled it the best so far from what I've seen from a, Controlling COVID perspective, yes, mm-hmm. but I feel like based on the nature the, of what of how they're mm-hmm. hand, how they're doing it compared to Major League Baseball, that was a it's given. A, yeah, so I will it's a, say it's an easier restart than baseball. I will say, those. in terms of from a fan experience and broadcast mm-hmm. perspective, I think Major League Baseball has handled it better than anybody. What's it, what's annoyed me for both sports is the uh, the funneled in crowd noise. <laughs> I, I actually it. don't I mind it. it. I, I think it. they've done an okay <laughs> job with it. I think they need to add a little bit more excitement. Like, uh, in, in, like in especially in the NBA, I've seen where like a big a big shot will happen or a big block, and it's like mm-hmm. sm- it's just like a smattering of crowd noise. You know, it's not <laughs> what you would actually get. I like I said, I from a fan perspective and just watching some of the games. I feel like Major League Baseball has handled the broadcast experience better than mm. most of the, than than the NHL and the NBA have, and mm. and that's not to say that that that'll stay that way. Mm-hmm. I I firmly believe that the NBA it's it's a learning experience for everybody, yeah. and I feel like baseball has been able to kind of hit the ground running a little bit better, but basketball will catch up hockey will mm-hmm. catch up i i think it's not none of them are a bad experience from a viewer perspective i think they're all good yeah. i actually am on the side of i kind of like the funneled in crowd noise because i it, it keeps you engaged a little bit more it, yeah. if it were just a silent basketball court i uh, how long can you stay engaged into that mm-hmm. we're not able to hear the players the way we want to granted you probably mm-hmm. still can but case in point mellow yes <laughs> but I don't think in a, a completely silent NBA arena outside of or NBA court outside of, you know, the, sh- the shoes squeaking and players yelling at each other is something that's mm-hmm. going to keep your norm, your average fan engaged. Mm-hmm. I think you have to have the crowd noise in there. You have to kind of give it more of a regular broadcast mm-hmm. experience to really heighten that mm-hmm. experience as a as a fan at sitting at home watching these games to really kind of feel normal. So to well, speak. like so from my experience with watching the NBA games, at least. I haven't really noticed their funnel and crowd noise until like, for example, free throws is what really annoys me. Like when, when the supposed away team is shooting free throws, they like turn up the crowd. noise. <laughs> but like knowing in my head, that's artificial. I'm like, all right, you're just being annoying. <laughs> well, I mean, now mind you, most of this crowd noise isn't actually in the court. It's just for the broadcast. So is it's, it? yes. As far I as I know, part. I don't think, as far as I know, I don't think mm-hmm. they put it in the, in the, the hall itself. Mm-hmm. I don't think the players can hear this. I think it's purely on the broadcast. Yeah. Now like, that's for me. It was, it was sufficient. It's like, to me, it's sufficient to hear like, like Kevin Harlan and whoever he has calling the game with him. Plus the, uh, bench and staff and stuff when a big play happens you hear them you hear the the color commentators get excited and the bench for me that was yeah that but works. andrew you're but. <laughs> you're coming from the experience of a, you're coming from the viewpoint of a person who enjoys watching the summer league the, well, most I, people I, don't i enjoy watching the summer league just to watch rooks <laughs> most people don't <laughs> they, 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 that most people don't consider that to be watching an nba basketball game they're there for the excitement oh, they're there to be they, nba basketball game what I don't consider it to be an NBA basketball right. game. I consider I get to see the rooks in action. That's all. Right, but most people don't consider that you know silent or close to silent game to be mm-hmm. the NBA experience. That's yeah. I could go to a random YMCA and watch that and get those exact same sounds mm-hmm. minus the commentary. And if I wanted yeah. the commentary, I'll add it myself. <laughs> it's it's obviously it's just really good basketball. That's mm-hmm. not the NBA experience. So the funneled mm-hmm. in crowd noise, I think they need to ramp it up a little bit. Cause you think about it. Cause let's, let's be real. It's this is, these mm-hmm. aren't just regular season games anymore. This is a pre playoffs yeah. atmosphere. This is a pre a race to the playoffs here. Um, I wonder if they are going to amp it up come the actual playoffs. I would sure hope so because I don't think they've quite got it right just yet. I think they need to add it to the excitement a little bit. And just to find that sweet spot, obviously mm-hmm. don't go over the top to where you can't hear anything, can't hear the players at all. Mm-hmm. You can't hear the broadcasters, but make it to the point where, OK, something big happened. Let's make it known kind of a deal, you know, and you got to get it right in that regard. Uh, also, you can't just have like a, a ho-hum play, just have the crowd erupting. I will say I do like the uh, virtual fans. <laughs> Is it better than the uh, than the cutouts at, at Major League Baseball stadiums? 
Yes. Those those crack me up. The cut, I, I like the people that have the cutout of their dogs, and and the one player has a cutout of his family out there. Those crack me up. I think I saw something that the Tigers were charging like two hundred dollars to put a cutout of you at the stadium or something like that. <laughs> I I could have sworn I had seen something like that on Twitter, oh and I was God. like, why would you do that? The only way I would do that. And this is how the Tigers should have done. And this is how Major League Baseball and honestly do this at any at, in all the sports, any stadium is you could pay for your cutout to a cutout of you to be at the, the stadium or arena in one mm-hmm. of the seats. But it also gives you a ticket to a game of your choice next year with free parking. That's that's a better way to do it. That's you how I would a, personally if you buy a ticket for next season. You get a cutout for. Yes. This season. And not everybody's going to do that. I think yeah. they could. Fill well, maybe up. if you buy like a certain amount of tickets for next season, you get a cut out for the. Like, yeah. Gets you cut out for this. Yeah. yeah. And not like I said, not everybody's going to do that because they're just going to mm-hmm. be like, I'll just buy my tickets next year. But it'll at least mm-hmm. get some ticket sales for next year. It'll get them some revenue and the fan yeah. can have a little bit of fun of, oh, hey, that's me on TV kind of deal. <laughs> Instead of I'm going to buy I'm going to pay way more than the price of a ticket to not go to a game and have cardboard Migos. A right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, so. The, the the big plus is uh, to the for me in the fan experience of the current NBA are I do I and I don't know what it is about the virtual fans I think it's how like creative they're letting the fans be in terms of what they're doing in their calls like one fan had a full on cardboard cutout Dirk and Whiskey sitting next to him so it looked like Dirk Nowitzki is in the stand <laughs> uh, that's funny I do what I, what I guess I do wish that they zoom in a little more on the fans sometimes. They kind of ignore that they're there. Well, that's for the most part. That's one of the things that I've noticed with the broadcast mm-hmm. for all the leagues is they haven't mm-hmm. quite figured out the filler time yet. Yeah. And baseball's got a lot more of it in terms of mm-hmm. quantity than the NBA or, or the NHL does. I mean, the but the NBA and the NHL have a lot more long framed filler time, you know, because mm-hmm. the whistle stoppages and, and the ice stoppages in, in the NHL of, you know, OK, goalie froze the puck. Now we got to get everybody lined back up for the face off. And, you know, we're normally in in the broadcast. We would see them pan to the crowd or to a player and give some background on them. Well, there's no crowd. So we've got to figure out how to fill that time. And Major League Baseball obviously has the in between pitches. That's one thing I've noticed that they're still trying to figure out is that filler time. What do we do in this time frame? And and at first in baseball games, they were just showing the broadcasters in their homes a lot or wherever they were. They were showing a lot of the broadcasters, which I'll be honest, I'm sick of seeing some of their faces, so I don't need to see them. Uh, I, I, I think that's unnecessary. I think it's a little bit too much. I, I think maybe you show a little bit more of the skyline or a little bit more of the players, you know, something along those lines to give you an idea, a little bit, just more variety in the filler. And I think all the sports mm-hmm. are are still, it's a work in progress to figure out how to balance that a little bit better. Yeah. So, so to circle it back to the, to the main question here. So you're not as, well, I should say this, your excitement level is not as affected by the COVID list. The, the growing COVID list because you believe that the COVID list will be this is basically as big as the COVID list is going to get and it'll be much smaller. Yeah, no, I, I think this is probably as mm-hmm. big as you're going to see the COVID list get unless, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a, a handful of players end up breaking their quarantine rules and going mm-hmm. out to a strip club a la Lou Will posting pics <laughs> all over the place. And, <laughs> and then you've got to, and then seven people get infected and then the whole team gets infected. That's a different story. Uh, yeah. that, that'd be more like what made, what the Marlins are dealing with right now where mm-hmm. they had 18, 18 people get infected that's a catastrophic situation that you really hope to not have. Obviously you do kind of plan for a little bit, but you don't really have a a workaround. So in that case, that's an excessive situation from what status quo, like what we expect things to go. I do think this is what the largest of the COVID list that we will see come once the season starts because players will know what their expectations are versus before they didn't. So I do think that it's really not something to worry about right away, but you know, it is something to keep an eye on, but I think this is probably the biggest we'll see. All right, let's keep it in-house in the NFL. Well, just, hang on. I, I do have oh, one yeah, question else? to kind of encapsulate my second mm-hmm. question of that. How do you feel? You know, mm-hmm. if you had to grade all the sports on how the restart has happened with in terms of quality of play, quality viewership experience, how they've handled the whole no fans COVID situation. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you feel that each sport has, you know, give them a grade has handled the restart. So I have not followed the NHL's restart. 
So I kind of gonna. I'd give them a B plus or an A minus. They've actually been pretty good. The the games have been very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's been good. It's been a little different, obviously, mm -hmm. but I felt like hockey was one that was was going to be pretty solid, just mm -hmm. based on the nature of the sport. There's always a heightened electricity with just the sport when it comes to the playoffs, anyway. So I felt like that was going to carry over, and it has. Uh, I I felt like hockey's done pretty good in terms of viewership mm -hmm. experience. I give it more closer to a B. Again, it's it's trying to figure out how to fill time. In in between the play, so and, and and well, for me the for like the the NBA's restart is it's an A. The only thing like, I can't really think of what I would do differently other than improve the uh, virtual fan experience from the viewers at home kind of thing. Improve like what they're seeing because it does look kind of choppy mm -hmm. when you watch it. Well, so for keep, that reason keep, alone, because mm -hmm. obviously I'm grading each of these. I'm not weighting any of these. I, I'm grading them yeah. at 33 percent, 33 percent, 33 percent. You know, so exactly. I, for that reason alone, I give the NBA a B because I don't think that the takes them all the way down to a B. Well, it's a third like, of their me, grade. It's a for third me. Of their it grade. hasn't it hasn't it affected my it's not as big of a factor in my viewership experience because, again, I'm not really watching for the fans. It's just something you occasionally notice. Well, no, it's it's the viewership experience from home and the mm -hmm. fans are only a part yeah. of that. It's the broadcast. It's it's mm -hmm. the uh, crowd noise. It's what I'm saying, know, the broadcast, it's the has broadcast been, as a whole broadcast has been great. I've not heard the crowd noise as much as I've heard in the OB. It's more factor. In, I've more noticed it on free throws than anything else. I I, in terms of level of play, I give them an A minus. Yeah. The NBA, A, and a that's our a bonus is, uh, is the games have been all very competitive. Yes, in liked. terms of the fan experience, I'd give it more of a B. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of how they've handled the COVID situation, I give them an A minus as well. Obviously, you have your you know a couple of guys here and there, but A to an A minus. I think they've done pretty mm -hmm. well. Uh, I was scared for a hot minute. I will mm -hmm. be honest about the NBA. I was scared, but I think they've mm -hmm. handled it well so far. So I guess I'll give them a B plus in a high B plus, mm -hmm. low A minus kind of situation. Major League Baseball level of play has been an A. I, I think the uh, there's something kind of special going on in baseball this year that I, I think is something to really pay attention to. And it's mm -hmm. because of the fact it's only a 60 game season. It's quite literally any team has a shot like the Tigers right now are four and two and we're 10 percent of the way through the season. This is something to pay attention to. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not a good baseball team in any way. So like <laughs> if they end up coming kind of close, this is mm -hmm. maybe get this may get kind of interesting. I think you will see a team that's looked at as bad end up getting into the playoffs because they got hot for 40 games or yeah. 20 games. And then you, a team you thought was good probably will end up missing the playoffs because they couldn't get their bats going or their pitching staff mm -hmm. couldn't get going. So I think this is an interesting year for baseball. So level play, I give an A. Viewership experience, I give them an A minus. I think they've been pretty damn good. And then in terms of how they've handled the COVID situation, obviously I can't really give them any very good grade. I'm gonna give them a C to a C plus. <laughs> yeah. The situation with Miami, the Philly is none of it's very good mm -hmm. right now. So we've had we've had games and entire weeks of games where these teams get postponed. Yeah. So that that's obviously not been very very yeah. good. I I I was going. I, I agreed on all fronts. I was going more like a you on how they handle this situation because i can't imagine much worse of a handling of a, situ of a situation I, well in terms of those teams <laughs> yeah and obviously you had the soto situation with the phillies where he had his covid test and then all of a sudden four days later oh he tested positive four days ago like how does that happen yeah how do you wait four <laughs> days to to get this information and stop him from playing it, it, mm -hmm. it does, didn't make sense to me it was not very well handled so i'll give him a c minus mm -hmm. then but overall i give him a, a b that C minus really mm -hmm. knocks them down, but everything else has been pretty good. And then the NHL, I give them level play an A to an A minus viewership experience, a B plus and quarantines that the, in the bubble situation obviously is an A. They've had almost zero issues so far. Knock on wood. They've got two bubbles. The East and the West. They've got them two completely separated. Then they'll probably can join them come mm -hmm. time to the playoffs. But I overall, if I had to give all sports a, a, a cumulative grade, I'd go an A. I, mm -hmm. And honestly, that's probably inflated by the fact that I'm just excited sports is back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel you there. If you want to continue the conversation, chime in on uh, Aerial Fan Report. Hit us up and let us know what your thoughts are on the restart, sports restart as a whole, and what your accept levels after the line. Yeah, we're curious to hear what you guys would grade each league, what you guys mm -hmm. think of the broadcast experience, the level of play, and just to see what your thoughts are. are do yeah. you like this new age of sports or mm -hmm. this temporary new age of sports? Yeah. How do you feel about it? All right. Keep it with the Lions, though. So the NFL's top 100 was just completed last week, and there was no Lions representation on this list. The question we're posing here is, Nicholas, do you think anyone on the Lions deserves to be on this list, or are you not surprised by the omission? 
Uh, I mean, just looking at the list, and, and yeah. that's really what you do when you're trying to go through this. You you look at mm-hmm. the list to really get a good gauge on it, and to see the guys that are towards the back of it. Now, mind you, one player on the list technically was a lion last year, but he was traded mm-hmm. to the Eagles this year, and that's Darius Slay. Yep. So there is that. So you kind of mm-hmm. sort of had a lion in, on the list, and <laughs> it's, it's more based off of the performance in years past. Mm-hmm. But he's not a lion anymore now. Seeing the names on the list, Dar- towards the back of this list, guys like Darius Slay, Darren Waller, Allen Robinson, Jason Kelsey, Frank Clark, Chris Carson, Buda Baker, names like that, can you pick a Lions player that is better than those guys? Because I don't know that I can. Trey Flowers um, did not have an excellent season last year. The only I name- can I can say that Golly was better than Allen Robinson. I don't know that he was. I don't know I mean- that he was. Just on stats alone, he got more yards and touchdowns, which is what they're citing in their NFL 100 list. Is Robinson led the Bears in what, yards and touchdowns? What was Kenny Galladay's total last year? Just barely more yards at 1190, and he had 11 touchdowns. How many catches? As opposed to um, Allen Robinson's seven. Oh, how many catches? Yeah, uh, that matters. Uh, it does. So that was on a 28 uh, receptions on 48 targets for a 58.3 percent catch rate. Wait, what? Sorry, that was 2017. That sounded low. I know. I was going to say uh, 65 receptions on 165 receptions on 116 targets for. 56. So Allen Robinson had a lot more receptions than Kenny Galladay did. He had 98. He had a lot more receptions. Almost hit the century mark. The yardage, I would almost obviously Allen Robinson isn't as big of a deep threat as mm-hmm. Kenny Galladay is, and that's where you're seeing Kenny Galladay getting more yardage and 33 fewer receptions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the touchdowns also Allen Robinson is as much of a red zone threat. You can make the argument. I, I, in all reality, I think Kenny Galladay is the one guy you can make an argument for. Trey mm-hmm. Flowers didn't have a great season. Stafford got hurt halfway through. He absolutely would have been on this list. And honestly, you can even make the argument he deserves to be on this list going into next year just because of the way he played last yeah. year. Now, the year prior doesn't help him. So maybe the past couple of years where he's been hurt has kind of hurt him and knocked him off this list. But Justin Coleman doesn't deserve to be on the list. I don't think he had a very good season outside of his first I agree few though, games. There. And beyond that, who else? Because I don't. Uh, Carry John, Carry on Johnson got hurt. Mm-hmm. He's not been able to stay healthy, and he's looked at as one of the better players. See, like just looking further down the list, I I, I think it just more solidifies the argument of Kenny Galladay. Because then you also have DK Metcalf at eighty one, who had fifty eight receptions for nine hundred yards, and nine touchdowns. Which his was uh, in a shortened season, though. I thought he only played like ten games. How many games did Metcalf play? I thought I didn't. I didn't think he missed. Anything I thought he missed games early in the season. But yeah, no, I agree with you that the only name I'd really really could no, stake an argument for games. never mind he only yeah. played he played 16 the only game i could really st- name i could stake an argument for is kenny galladay uh because stafford has that big if of he missed all these games like so, yeah i heard to see like josh allen list over stafford but i get it stafford played like five games yeah so uh, josh allen doesn't is not a yeah. better quarterback than matthew stafford but <laughs> josh allen it does not have a good arm I, he's yeah. got a great arm in terms of power <laughs> the dude could throw the ball a mile mm-hmm. but if you ask him to throw it half a mile in like a certain size square, he'll never hit it. <laughs> Dude's accuracy is terrible. He's got a great arm. Can't hit the broad side of a ball. Let's just let's just let's just put it this way: he'll throw more balls and strikes. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> now I, I was gonna like try to play a little bit of a. Yeah. He doesn't deserve to be on the list. I think Kenny Galladay is one of the top 100 players in the NFL. He's the only guy I could make a case for in the Lions. I think he deserves mm-hmm. to be there. But I was going to make the argument of maybe they, he hasn't earned the respect yet, being as young as he is and is you know soon into the league. This is his first big breakout year. But if you're going to include guys like DK Metcalf further into that list, who was a rookie, then why can't you <laughs> include a guy like Kenny Galladay? It takes that argument yeah. completely away. Who well, again, in DK Metcalf's case, Kenny Galladay outpaced him on everything, including yes. catches. So. so with that being said, Kenny Galladay deserves to be on this list. If you're going to have mm-hmm. guys like Allen Robinson, who you could argue is right there with him, if you're going to have guys mm-hmm. like DK Metcalf, who Kenny Galladay paced him on all stat stat bases, mm-hmm. why can't you have Kenny Galladay? It, yeah. it doesn't make sense not to put him in at this point. There's mm-hmm. no argument against him here. Sure, did he did uh, now? Did Kenny Galladay slow down at the end of the year? Yes, dude was almost non-existent towards the end, if I recall. He also had a third string quarterback. He though. also had like a fourth string quarterback in there. <laughs> uh, he had no quarterback at the end of the year. As soon as Stafford yeah. got hurt, his numbers died for good reason. He mm-hmm. had no quarterback anymore. Versus DK Metcalf had Russell Wilson throwing him the ball all year. That's not bad. I would take Russell Wilson over David Blau. Or who are some of the other guys? Jeff Driscoll. There was Jeff another name. Driscoll. I would take Russell Wilson all day throwing me the football. <laughs> so should I take Josh Allen over Jeff Driscoll throwing me the ball? 
so because I kind of wanted to shift the conversation a little bit, but so if you had any final thoughts where I shifted it, no, Kenny Gallagher okay. deserves to be on this list, and I'll and I'll stand by it. So, um, where I want to take this is going into this season, assuming health, and it, <laughs> I want you to call your shot. Do you expect any Lions to be on the top one hundred for twenty twenty one? Yes, I have three. I have three what players. I I I am expecting to be on this list come next year. Who you got? One, I'm gonna, Kenny I'm gonna see if I'm on the same wavelength. All one, right. Kenny Gallagher. Okay. Two, Matthew Stafford. And three, DeAndre Swift. Yep, we're on the same way with. Okay. I think DeAndre Swift has a chance to be an absolute star. He, he, he looks like a stud. He's your short yardage guy now. He's your, you know, the modern day equivalent of your bell cow back. He's able to give Carrion Johnson the spell he needs. He's a better mm-hmm. pass catcher than Carrion. I, I think he's the bigger threat, and I think he should be the starting running back come day one. Yep. I think DeAndre Swift has a, has a chance to be the offensive rookie of the year. Now could, he might even be my favorite pick right now. Now, could obviously there's players in our defense that could also, but we talked about this before. Like there, our defense, there's a lot of youth and a lot of question marks there. Obviously, we put down yourself to add his youth too. But like for example, uh, Jeff Okuda, you could you could see it happen. But like it's just such. I feel like Jeff. O, like I feel like it's so much harder to make the top 100 as a defensive player than it is as an offensive player in the NFL. I don't know if it's just my personal. Well, yeah, bias when you screw or... up, it's magnified. <laughs> <laughs> Well, especially so like, as a defensive back, when you get burned, oh, it looks bad. I feel like Jeff Okuda has a bigger hill to climb to get in that top 100. Than, I'll agree with you. I think um, there's... I think the, and that's the, but that's a defensive guy I would stake my claim in it, is Jeff Okuda. I think the one guy who's got the biggest potential on the defensive end to make that top 100 list is actually Trey Flowers. Because pass rush is so important. If he has a 10-sack season this year... I think Trey Flowers is on the list because yeah. that number right there is so influential in how a game turns out. That sack number, if you're able to rush the passer, and Trey Flowers is obviously very talented at it, but he didn't have any help last year to get him free. If he's able to rush the passer successfully this year, I do think he makes that list next year. I think he's the biggest threat, in my opinion, on that defensive end, on that defensive side of the football to make the top 100 list going into next year. I think Jeff Okuda is right behind him, but I think he's got a bigger hill to climb. Just because I think it's, I would argue it's even harder as a defensive back than it is as a, as a player along the D line to make the list because when you screw up, it's magnified. If someone burns you, guess what? Your face is all the egg on it, and nobody else's fault but yours. Versus on the defense side, on the defensive line, you know you can take a couple plays off and nobody would and, and nobody would notice as long as you go and get a sack on third down, kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. Can't do that on on as a defensive back. Take a couple plays off, the other team's got six points. So. But I, I do think if I had to pick one defensive player for the Lions, it'd be Trey Flowers. Uh, I, I think he's talented enough. I think he, he's got the potential to be a 10-sack guy, maybe even but maybe even more, and I think he's probably the most talented on that defensive side of the ball anyway. So he's my guy to pick on the deep that. side. But, yeah, we're so we're both taking our claim, though, in three offensive players. Yes, <laughs> and, and I'm calling it now. I'm telling you right now, DeAndre Swift will be in the conversation for Offensive Rookie of the Year, provided Ooh. he stays healthy. Ooh. Provided he stays healthy. Where are you drafting in fantasy? He's going to end up pretty high. <laughs> Third I, round? You, That's maybe. usually where your high-profile rookies that aren't like bona fide that aren't Saquon stars. or Zeke, yeah. or Zeke Elliott. Zeke Williams. You usually go Elliott. around third round. Yeah. High third. Yeah. So that's probably where I expect the Anderson to go in fantasy. Probably late third, I'd be willing to take a, a, a flyer on him. I'm a little scared of the Lions in particular, and putting that much stock in a Lions player outside of Kenny Galladay True. scares me. True. And even Kenny Galladay at this point scares me to yeah. put stock in. Yeah, for sure. But um, anyway, because like I, I don't know who. <laughs> Where do you think a guy like Derrick Henry goes? Yeah, he's easy going top ten. You think? Yeah, Derrick Henry's going top ten. I uh, oh God, he scares me this year. Like last year, I was all aboard the Derrick Henry train, and you know it. I was mm-hmm. all aboard the Derrick Henry train, and yeah. and I mean that a hundred percent. I I said he's going to be one of the top five fantasy players in top three in running backs. He will be the guy. Go after him. I didn't end up with him in any of my leagues, and I was pissed. <laughs> what happened? But a guy like that, though, where he is going to be focused on that much, and a guy who is a short yardage guy runs up the middle and takes a beating, I'm, I'm scared. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little scared this year on him. But it's like throwing the Hulk down the middle rather than throwing Captain. <laughs> it is. I mean, he is 250 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's, let's take it to our closer. ESPN tweeted out a graphic. That uh, I thought it would be fun to talk about on the show. And it relates to now defunct sports video games franchises. And basically, they tweet out nine 
franchise is saying you only get one choice to, to you only get one choice you can revive one of these franchises who would it be so that would be fun for us to take a trip down memory lane with this a little bit so the nine sports franchises that you have the option of reviving or sports video games in general you have the option of reviving here are mvp baseball nba ballers ssx fight night ncaa football nfl street mlb slugfest espn nfl 2k or nba street okay so I think there's one. I think there's. I really don't think it's that tough. I think there's really? one clear one here, and actually, mm-hmm. it's so clear in my mind mm-hmm. that as soon as I say it, I'm going to disqualify it. Really? Yes. Anything other than NCAA football, you're a liar. <laughs> you're straight up a liar, or I've never played the game. Uh, uh, NCAA football is one of the greatest games ever made. Are, I, it's, it, it's, it's honestly got one of my favorite sports games. It, it's it's the precise reason why I say it's a tough one because for me, I am torn. Between NCAA football and ESPN NFL 2K. And here's why I'm putting NFL 2K in that list. That is it's my be- number two. It's because I feel like as like a sports video game fan, I feel like I almost have – There's the, the benefit of having NFL ESPN NFL 2K back is kind of twofold because Madden has kind of been resting on his laurels. They, they've kind of been coasting. And their game is basically just a roster update at this point. They're not yeah. really doing anything. You're not wrong. It. So, in my opinion, one, we get the superior NFL game back. And two, I think the added competition will get you two great NFL franchises back in the fold rather than one mediocre one. And which, is why, honesty, that, which is why that one was the one I was torn between with that and NCAA football. In all honesty, that era of Madden, mm-hmm. too, was arguably a golden age. Obviously, the best Madden was soon after, like a couple of years after mm-hmm. the 2K games went away. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know that the competition is something that will drive the Madden game to mm-hmm. be any better. It, it I think, might have I think to. The, I think 2005, between what Madden put out in NFL, Madden NFL 2005 and uh, 2K, 2000, 2K5, I think that was the best single year for uh, football. I don't disagree NFL that that was the best games. single year for football mm-hmm. video games. Plus, you mm-hmm. also still had NCAA Football 05. But I will say, like the common consensus that I've heard is that Madden 09 is probably the best Madden game. So mm-hmm. the 2K games not being there really didn't have it or being there didn't have any is, effect on it. Wait, is 09 the one with Brett Favre on the cover? I'm trying to remember. I think now. so. So that, it doesn't really have an effect on it may not have had uh, as much I'm of an effect on on how men's performance in that mm-hmm. regard. But I do think Madden has gotten kind of lazy. And, mm-hmm. and that's why I would say that with. But when it comes to NCAA football, those games are so beloved that there's still people out there that release a roster update every single year. For the last NCAA football game that was that was played, I think it was fourteen, yeah. if I remember right. Mm-hmm. There's still a roster update that comes out every single year for that game. Mm-hmm. That's how much that game is beloved, and 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 that's why I say like it's such a clear winner for me in this that I almost have to disqualify it because there's so many people that would agree. I would argue mm-hmm. most would agree. I, I'd probably say that if you've played that any of those games and were a fan of football games, that's your pick because we still mm-hmm. have Madden. Now, I will say the argument for NFL 2K, I, I do think it is one of my all-time favorite football video games. It, it, mm-hmm. it had so many different effects to it. It had the fans being shown, which mm-hmm. really wasn't as widely expected in most games back then. It had the in-the-helmet cam, if I remember right, that was totally new. It had a different mm-hmm. feel to the you know the speed burst, the sprinting. It had a different feel to breaking a tackle. It had the... The you, halftime was awesome. Too. Right. The like, halftime was cool. You had the for that broadcast experience <laughs> that was awesome. That was totally groundbreaking. And then you yeah. had the on just the extras in the game. You had your own house that you got to decorate as mm-hmm. a fan of a team in your own specific way. Your crib, if I remember right, yeah. as they called it. It was an awesome game and it was totally fun. I wasted hours on that. It's the thing with NCAA football where where it uh your mic just went crazy. Did it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing with NCAA football where I, I also feel like it gets a, it could be even better, not just because of like obviously next gen update graphics, but it could be an even better game. It's because unless I'm living in an alternate reality, I had seen remember last year that the NCAA Board of Governors voted to allow senior athletes to be paid for the use of their name, to, image, and likeness. Right? Kind of, sort of. They did allow uh, something along the lines of they did allow them to make money off of their names and likeness. I don't know if it pertained to a video game, so to speak, and it may have only been certain conferences. I know there's mm-hmm. something along those lines that was thrown out there. All um, I'm saying is it opens the door to having a fuller NCAA football experience it where does. you can actually use 
the real player names, right? Get a little closer to likeness, and and it makes me it makes me even more excited to play NCAA football. That's that's why I'm torn between the two. And I and if we're eliminating it, I'll go ESPN NFL 2K. But I'll be honest with you, 2K had the edge because of the twofold uh, benefit that I was envisioning in my head. That's I mean that's totally mm-hmm. fair. It, it, On its own in a in a vacuum, it's NCAA football. The reason but I right the reason the, the I took, opportunity to get a man off its ass. The is, reason um, I take NCAA I, football also is because of uh-huh. that in in those games, especially the later ones, you had the mm-hmm. potential to play as a local high school player. You know, be the star, mm-hmm. start playing yep, a local high that. school team, and mm-hmm. work, get recruited, go through that experience, and then become the star on campus in mm-hmm. college, which was awesome. I felt like that experience was so cool and. But obviously, in the newer, some of the newer football games, you can play in college, and then in, in in the NBA games, you can play in college, and then go and be in the pros. And I feel like you know that's something that they can bring into a newer two K is is start in mm-hmm. college and go to the pro level. The thing I also about two K games that I give them an edge over the EA Sports games is they always seem to be just a touch, or even more so than a touch, interactive. They mm-hmm. a little bit more immersive. You know, you feel mm-hmm. like you're more into a, the story and more into the feel of the game. And it's not just playing out like a, a movie that's already picked for you. Mm-hmm. Like in the new med and career modes, like the long shot thing, it felt like the whole thing was kind of already there. It wasn't very good versus some mm-hmm. of the 2K story modes were pretty damn good. And I felt like NFL 2K would be would really immerse you into, you know, a career mode where you do start in college and maybe even 2K would go beyond that. And you start in high school and you work your way through college and you have this whole hometown hero kind of feel to it. And it and it breaks out, out into you're an NFL star. And I and, and I feel like 2K would be the, the game that would do that. And that's one yeah. of the reasons I would feel like NFL 2K5 coming back 2K game NFL 2K game coming back would just be absolutely insane. And and that's one of the things I do kind of lean a little bit more towards 2K. Again, I'm disqualifying NCAA football at this point <laughs> because I think it's just an easy winner. But outside of that, that's one of the reasons I would want an out of all 2K game mm-hmm. to come back for sure. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, though, because uh, I know you're a bigger baseball fan than I. Did you play either MVP baseball or MVP Fest? Because I never played either, either of those games. Both of them. I played both of them. I prefer MVP baseball. I played mm-hmm. several different iterations of that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually think it was a really good baseball game. I, I kind of wish they do would bring it back because I do think MLB The Show needs a little bit of competition. And also, we needed mm-hmm. a baseball game on the Xbox. We only have one on P- on PlayStation. There's We only have the show on PlayStation. We don't have a baseball game on Xbox, and I feel like that's a damn crime to cut out mm-hmm. half no. to more than half of <laughs> the, market. The, the market. So I, I think we need to see a baseball game come back to you know compete. But MVP I'd, baseball, in my opinion, was a little bit better than Slugfest for sure. I, I do want to shout out NBA Ballers, especially NBA Ballers Phenom that had Chauncey on the cover. I used to love those two. NBA games, Ballers is per, pretty sweet. But I, I will I will agree that the whole it's just one on one the whole time. Actually, no, there was two on two, I believe, if I remember correctly. But it would need some significant updating, right? If you were right, to revive for that. Sure. But I used to love that game. <laughs> Definitely. But anything else to add before we close out? No. That's that's everything I got. All right, guys. Thank you guys for listening so much this week again. Uh, sorry again about not having last week. It just got way too busy for us to even record an episode. But we're back again. Yes, we back. hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Follow us on Twitter at Roof Fan Report. As we mentioned before, we'd love to hear you know your thoughts on everything. You know What game do you want to see come back? Give your reasons. And if you take the lazy way out with NCAA football, boring. <laughs> um, so give us give us a good a good perspective, but also give us your thoughts on you know how the leagues have handled their the sports restart. We finally got sports back, mm-hmm. and we're excited. So, but thank you to you, Andrew. Thank you guys for listening, and thank you to Detroit Sports Podcast as always. We will catch you guys next week. This has been the Fan Bye, fans. Four fans. Thank you guys again. Have a good week. Peace.